When I first heard I was going to be talking about transmedia, I thought it sounds like something that you, is more likely to be heard on the beaches of Ibiza. Uh, it sounded like something to do with trans music. It, I mean, I had no idea what, what I was going to be saying. Having said that, I've made a few notes while the session was going on. No, I'm kidding. I, I did think about it a little bit. A little bit. And what I did realize was that uh, when it comes to media as we traditionally know it, we discuss it in silos. So as we're doing today, in a sense, we're talking movies, we're talking radio, we're talking print, we're talking digital. But I think the consumer and the creator today does view media in a very, very different way. Uh, when you talk about the younger generation that has been exposed to all kinds of media, they, they don't think about media as in specific discrete silos. They just think about the content that they're consuming, and they're consuming it on various platforms as and when they want to, in the way that they want to, with the relevance that it has to them, and they're being able to control what exactly they're, they're viewing or they're reading at a point of time that they want to consume it. So I think it's very important for us to be able to discuss media in a broader light and to be able to talk about it in, in the context of the way that the younger consumer, who is going to be our core consumer maybe in the next 10 years, is really consuming that media. So just a couple of things. I, I, I guess we all agree with the INB minister when he says that 100 billion seems a small target for the year 2020, and it's great to think big. Having said that, where we are today is we're at the $9 billion mark, uh, which pretty much accounts for the top five biggest blockbusters in Hollywood, and that's it. That's the size of the media and entertainment uh, you know, uh, pie here in the country today, which I think we can all agree is, is really, really small and has tremendous scope for growth. Uh, it all boils down to the fact that studies have shown that nine paise out of every rupee that a family spends is, spend on, is spent on media, entertainment, and leisure. And by any global benchmarks, that's a pretty low number. And the idea really in the years going forward would be for us to be able to, as you know, consumption increases and discretionary income increases, for us to be able to take that number up. Um, when we talk about transmedia and we think about the people creating it, uh, we are the largest film producing country in the world, we're the largest media consuming country in the world. We'd imagine that our movies are watched far and wide in cinemas. So just to give you an example, I mean a film like Chennai Express, which released across the country in pretty much every cinema there was, was watched by only 3% of the population of this country. And a massive chunk of that population actually watched it on television and not in the cinema. So 3% of the country actually watched it in a movie theater, and the rest of the people who saw the movie watched it on, on TV. But the creators of the film, and we take responsibility for that as well, and the creative team would think about the way that the movie was going to be viewed in the cinema hall, and not how it's going to be viewed on television. And I think that actually gives, and that sounds like the logical thing to do because you're making a movie, you have to make it for the cinema. But today the creators going forward are going to be thinking more and more about the platforms on which their content is going to be seen the most and adapt that content, whether it's the duration of that content, whether it's the, 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 the feeling of that content, the way in which it's consumed for the screen on which it's going to be consumed and viewed the most. When you create a trailer of a movie today, you're really concerned about how it's going to be looking on the big screen, is the sound working well, but that trailer is going to be viewed so negligibly on the big screen and so much more on a mobile phone or on a laptop or on an iPad that you should spend more time thinking about the way that it's going to be viewed on that, you know, on, on that device. And that actually talks back to the fact about how we view the way that we are producing content today and we view it in silos. Um, when we talk about the consumer of today, um, and this is just to give you a sense of the way it's worked in the West, um, the way that the movie industry there has evolved, the way that the television industry there has evolved, it has evolved in order to be able to meet the way that people are consuming content there. So for example, the big movies today, if you have to draw people into the cinema halls, they are the franchise movies, they are the big tent poles, they're the superhero movies, or otherwise they're the high concept edgy movies which people are dying to watch on that opening weekend. The drama and the comedy has moved to television. The binge viewing has moved to television because that's where people in the luxury of their homes or when they are traveling are being able to view content that has layers. So you're already seeing the storytelling change. 
in terms of what is watched in a cinema hall is much less layered today than, watches, than, than what is watched on a television screen. Having said that, what's watched on online or mobile is snackier content, it's discrete contents, it's uh, shorter format content, and the content creators who are making content for that platform are doing it keeping in mind where and how that content is going to be viewed. Print, people turn to today less for news and less for breaking news, obviously, than for in-depth analysis for, uh, for, for, for the op-ed pieces to get a take on things rather than to get news. And I think this is really crucial because today when you're creating content and you are a traditional media company, you need to, number one, be hiring people who think in that manner and who are able to break down the content into thinking about probably IPs or franchises and then later about which medium or which platform that content is going to be viewed on. Because increasingly, the lines are blurring between each of the mediums and we need to start producing content more keeping in mind the concept and less keeping in mind the platform. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say, and I'm sure we'll have Q&As later so we can open it up for that. Thank you.